Hey everybody, welcome back to another chemistry video lesson. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and focus our attention on chemical reactions. Now there's two broad classes of chemical reactions we're going to focus on. One is called a double replacement reaction and the second is called oxidation uh, reduction reaction. Um, we're going to focus today on talking about the double replacement reaction, the two types which are precipitate formation and acid base reactions. These two reactions are classified together because of the fact that they both do the same general idea idea. They both remove ions from a solution. Okay, So we're going to use this, we're going to try to, to come up with a system here so that we can make predictions on chemical reactions uh, and figure out what the product's going to be just by looking at the various reactants that we have. So our first type, the double replacement reaction, is when we take two compounds and they're going to exchange ions in order to remove uh, the ions from the solution. Now, I'm going to start off right off the, right here and just say I do not like the name double replacement reaction. I don't like this definition. It's very misleading. Uh, it makes you think that the ions are literally actually exchanging in the reaction, and that's not really truly what's going on. So we're going to look at the reactions uh, step by step and try to get a general idea of what's going on. And then at the end, I'll talk about why they use this name double replacement and why they talk about ions exchanging. Uh, but for the first thing we need to do is we need to look at... Um, since we're talking about ions and we need these ions to react together, we need to talk about the solubility of ionic compounds. Okay, uh, Because remember, ionic compounds are made up of ions that are grouped together um, based on their positive and negative charge. Well, the problem with this is that in the solid state, they don't really move around. They're kind of stuck where they're at, so they can't get any mobility. So there's two ways we can get these ions to move. We can melt this down into a liquid, which requires a lot of heat, which we really aren't going to be doing. Or the second is a little bit easier as we dissolve them in water. Now, when we dissolve these ions in water, those ions are going to dissociate. They're going to break up into ions. That's what dissociation means. It means to break things down into their pieces. So in this case, when I take sodium chloride and I put it into water, Water, it's going to dissociate and break up into ions. Okay, and this is where the conduction of electricity comes from, is because of those ions that are in, in inside of that solution. We're going to see another substance later, molecules that don't break up into ions. They don't dissociate. Now we can dissolve molecules, but they will not dissociate into the various ions. Okay, so and this is why we want them, or the reason we want them in an ion form, is because now they're free to move around. So I can get these ions to come in contact with other ions, and we can get a chemical reaction to happen. Now I can get these ions to contact, but the problem is they're only going to contact. On the surface, the inner ions are never really going to do anything. So this is a much better uh, situation. So you're going to see a lot of this uh, aqueous where we're dissolving things. These ionic compounds are going to dissolve into uh, water. But not all ionic compounds are going to dissolve the same way, and that's a, that's a little bit of a problem here. So there's some general rules for uh, determining whether an ionic compound will dissolve in water. Okay. Um, now there's a lot to this, and we're not going to get into why and how these ions are dissolving into the water and how dissolving happens. We're just going to be looking at the results of the solutions being formed. Later on in solu chapter in solutions, we'll talk in more depth about the process for how this happens. But for right now, we just want to follow these three uh, simple rules. So what they say here is that the most salts, and we say salt by the way salt is an ionic compound it's just another term for ionic compound so on uh, most ionic compounds containing nitrates are soluble so what that means is if it says it's soluble it's going to dissolve and it's going to break up into ions so therefore if I were to have a solution that has nitrates in it like for example I had a solution that had um, sodium nitrate dissolved in it I would have sodium ions and I would have nitrate ions in the solution. That is really sloppy and I apologize, uh, but you got the nice little pretty pictures over here. But So anytime I have a sodium or an ionic compound that dissolves, I'm going to imagine it's broken up into its various ions. So we're going to keep that in mind. Anything that's aqueous that's an ionic compound, we're going to try we're going to treat it as if it were broken up into the various ions that make it up. Okay? So anything that with the nitrate in there will be able to dissolve and dissolve, dissociate into ions. If it has a um, sodium in there or a lithium or a potassium or any other alkali metal, it will also dissociate into ions and break up into ions. And the last class is the ammonium. So these are the ones that you want to focus on. Now, you don't have to memorize these rules. They're given to you on, on the quizzes and tests in here, but um, these are the general rules for anything that's going to dissolve. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. These are the, anything that's anything other than these, you're going to assume would be a solid when we put it in the water and it will not dissolve. It'll stay intact. 
I'm going to show you examples of how this is going to play out in just a second. So when we're talking about double replacement reactions, we want to talk about the driving force. And the driving force is what makes the reaction happen. It's the, the, the thrust that makes the reaction form into the products. Okay. In this case, for double replacement reactions, we're going to be talking about removing those ions from solution. So you saw in the last uh, slide there that I was talking about ions being moving around in the solutions. Well, when we do a double replacement reaction, we want to try to remove some of those ions so that they're no longer going to be in that solution anymore. So how do we do that? Well, we do it in one of two ways. We either form a precipitate or we form water. Now, a precipitate is just a type of solid, so don't get too caught up in that term. Whenever I say precipitate, I'm talking about a solid. Precipitate is a solid that's formed when two solutions are mixed together. So the form of precipitation reaction would be a reaction that forms a precipitate or a solid when we mix them together. Okay, so that's that's the general idea. So when the forms a solid, as you saw before, those ions are no longer free to move around in the solution. When we form water, we're going to see as well that those ions are no longer free to move around solution. So whenever a, the ions are removed from solution, a double replacement reaction takes place. Okay. Now, here's the reaction we're looking at. We're looking at sodium chloride. Okay. It's a solution of sodium chloride mixed with a solution of silver nitrate. So the way I would write this would be uh, sodium nitrate, right? because it's sodium nitrate and it's aqueous. So this is what I have here, sodium nitrate aqueous. Whenever I have sodium nitrate and it's aqueous, it's because there's nitrates here and there's sodium here, those are always going to dissolve. Now when you have an ion a compound, it dissolves and dissociates into the ions. Okay, let me make an adjustment here because I forgot that this is not sodium nitrate, but this is actually going to be silver nitrate. So let's try that again, silver nitrate and that is aqueous. Okay, now over here I'm going to mix that with sodium chloride. So I've got sodium chloride which is also aqueous. So whenever I put the sodium chloride into water and it dissolves, it's going to dissociate into the ions that make it up. Okay, so therefore these are the two solutions that I have. Okay, now I'm going to mix these two solutions together and this is the result I get. I get all of these ions together in one solution. Okay, now when I look at the results here and I look at what's going on, there's some possibilities here. Now, the sodium could come in contact with the nitrate, right? The uh, sodium, the silver could come in contact with this chloride ion. Silver could come in contact with the nitrate. Sodium could come in contact with the chloride, right? Then positives and negatives are all going to attract each other, and the positive and the negatives uh, are going to repel each other, okay? So, if I look at this, I already know that when silver comes in contact with nitrate, it stays aqueous and there's no solution forming. Sodium comes in contact with chloride, it's going to stay aqueous as well. So the only real possible connections here is going to be the fact that that chloride and that silver can come together and they can form a solid. Now sodium and the nitrate could also come together and make a solid. Okay. But if I apply my solubility rules that I saw in that last slide, all nitrates and sodiums are going to be aqueous and dissolve in water. So I know it can't be that possibility. The only other possibility for the solid is going to be that silver chloride to form. So what happens is when the silver and the chloride come together and they come in contact in the solution, they link together in a solid phase and they stay together as a group and they form an insoluble substance and no longer are they in the solution. They have now been removed and they're now sitting here as a solid at the bottom. Okay, so whenever these ions come together and they don't follow those solubility rules, what you're going to have happen is the formation of a solid. Now take a look at the sodium and the nitrate ions. They didn't really do anything. They kind of stayed there and didn't have any effect. And that's going to be important later when we write, try to write these reactions a little bit uh, in a shorter version later. But for right now, focus on the fact that this is an insoluble ionic compound. It doesn't fit into the rules. If you go back to the rules, there's no chloride in there and there's no silver rule. So those are going to be our solids. So we're going to play a deduction game here and kind of look at all of the ions that are possible in the solution and see which ones will match those rules. So when I'm finished here, I can write the overall equation. And the overall equation that we're going to write is silver and the chloride coming together to form the solid. Okay, and what's going to be left over is sodium nitrate aqueous. You get this AQ on here. Okay, so this would be your 
double replacement reaction. That's what this is right here. This is how we're going to write these reactions, but this is really what's going on in the in the visual, right? This is what's happening at the microscopic level. This is referred to as a particle diagram, and the diagram helps us to visualize what's happening at the atomic level while our reaction or our equation helps us to describe what's happening using symbols and, and notations. You just have to double check for it to be balanced. In this case it is going to be balanced. We don't have to worry about that. But I don't like to call these double replacement reactions. And the reason why they call them this is because this ion and this ion seem to be replacing or switching places. So the silver was with nitrate, now the silver is with chloride. So it seems like they switched places and that's why they call it a double replacement. I don't like this because it leaves you, leaves you with the idea that these two are actually coming together and forming something, when in reality they're not. They're really staying dissolved and staying the same from both the front and the back, or from the reactants to the product side of this reaction. So therefore we don't really have these coming together. And the reason why they do this is because they assume that you know that whenever you see AQ, you would imagine that this is dissolved and dissociated into ions. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. So in this reaction here, I've got potassium nitrate mixed with a solution of sodium chloride. So I'm switching things around a little bit. Now in this case, I've got uh, potassium nitrate, and that's going to be AQ. Okay, again, potassium's alkali metal. Nitrate is the rule from the solubility rules. Sodium chloride, again, we know the sodiums are always going to make our substances aqueous. And we also know these are aqueous because it tells us here that they're solutions in a solution. So when I look at the, the end results over here, okay, so this is my reactants, okay, um, and you can do this thing where you switch the ions. You can switch the potassium and the sodium and write down potassium chloride, and you can write down sodium uh, nitrate over here. I don't know why my writing is really sloppy today. I apologize. Um, so anyway, over here, when we look at what's really going on in the solution, though, right, our possibilities is that the potassium can go with the nitrate. Well, we know it doesn't do anything. Sodium and the chloride aren't going to do anything. So the possibility is that the potassium could link together with the chloride. But remember, all alkali metals are aqueous. So therefore, I'm going to put an AQ here, and this will stay dissolved. So these are not going to come together to make the solid. Then we look at sodium with the nitrate. Well, again, the rules are sodiums and nitrates stay uh, dissolved. They're not going to, to form a solid. They're going to stay dissolved in the water. So therefore, I'm going to put an AQ here. Notice AQ, 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 AQ. Everything is staying aqueous. There is no solid forming, no precipitate forming. I'm going to use PPT for precipitate to, to abbreviate it. So no precipitates forming. So really, this is no reaction is occurring. So we have nothing going on. This really is just a matter of mixing these two solutions together and really the ions are just staying there. So there's no reaction. So again, we use the solubility rules. We're trying to find a way to get those ions to be removed from solution. So let's just go back and look at that last one again. Notice what happened here. There's silver ions, there's chloride ions floating around in the solution before you know the reaction happens. When the reaction occurs, those ions are now no longer in the solution. They're pulled out of the water because now they're in a solid phase. Okay, they're now turned into a solid as they precipitate it out. Okay. Alright, so let's look at one last part, which is on acid base reactions. These are very similar, it's just one little change that happens. Now with an acid base reaction, what we're going to do here is we're going to form water rather than a solid. Okay. So if you remember we talked about acids and acids produce hydrogen ions. Okay, that's what they have. So HCl, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, all have that hydrogen ion in them. Okay. Bases are compounds that have the hydroxide ion in them. So they have that OH minus ion in them. Okay. So lithium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So when the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion come together, what they're going to do is they're going to form water. Now water is a molecule, right? This is a molecule. It's made up of two nonmetals, so therefore molecules are no ions. So what happens when we form this molecule water, there's no ions anymore. We've removed that ionic property from them because the hydrogen and the hydroxide become H2O. And you can see it H. OH in here. Now I tend to write it like that and I'll show you in just a second. So if I take an example here, a solution of hydrochloric acid, which would be here, HCl, 
and HCl is a strong acid and those are going to be aqueous because acids, remember hydrogen ions are alkali in the alkali metal family so acids are always going to be aqueous for us okay uh, base potassium hydroxide again potassium is an alkali metal potassium hydroxide that's going to be aqueous as well remember if we're treating these as if they were ion well this is an ionic compound because it's a polytomic ion remember acids when they dissolve in water have these ions put into the solution. What's making the solution acidic is that hydrogen ion that's in that solution. What makes this basic is that hydroxide ion. When I mix these two solutions together, what happens is they all come together and they mingle together. And as that hydrogen and hydroxide come together, they're going to create water molecules in the solution. So these are going to join together to make little groups of water. So you get these water molecules to form, which has again removed ions from solution. So in this case, I don't really have a solid forming, but I am forming water. So what I have in this reaction when I'm finished is potassium chloride. Again, potassium is aqueous because it's an alkali metal. And what I have left over is HOH. I tend to like to write it like this because it makes balancing a little bit easier. And this is going to be a liquid. So when you're looking at these, okay, you're looking for solids and liquids to form. And the only liquid you're really going to see in this chapter is going to be water. So that's the only one you're going to have to deal with at this point. Okay, so we're looking for those ions to be removed when these double replacement reactions happen. Again, double replacement, you can go ahead and switch these ions if you want. It's up to you. It's how you want to do it. You can write water like this, by the way, if you want. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. And you'll see when we balance later. I might have already shown you this trick, depending on where we're at. But anyway, hydrogen, you could switch it and then look at these and then determine whether they're aqueous or not based on the solubility rules and also look for water to form. Okay? So watch the solubility rules and look for water to form. Anytime you have an acid, it's usually an indicator that you're going to form water. All right, so that's your intro to double replacement reactions, and uh, we'll take a look at these a little more. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching.